My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I've been one of my friends just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to teach, but to entertain. Call me at 1-800-743-CBC. Tweet me at Jim Kramer. Can't feel good about a market they can send down stocks of Coca-Cola or PepsiCo as easily as it can crush Apple or Microsoft. Hey, this thing is just plain awful. Dow dropping another 237 points today. S&P falling 0.58%. NASDAQ declining just 0.26%, but dragged down by the relentless trashing of the transports, the communications, and, of course, the bank stocks. So, you know what? I'm going to deviate a little here. I want to tell you a story because it fits this moment perfectly. So last night I got home a little bit before my wife poured myself a mezcal the way that my dad poured himself a wild turkey when he got home after a tough day of making no sales at his packaging business. Lisa had gone to get me some ground coffee, super nice as always, and she could see I was down, not even waiting for her to come home before a cocktail. Bad form. What was wrong, she asked. I told her Cisco blew up. And then I explained what that meant, what blowing up, man, how much I wanted Chuck Robbins, CEO of Cisco, to have a good quarter. She reminded me, I always say that it's not about friends, it's about money. So maybe I should just accept the fact that we're going into a recession. Stocks are horrible. Chuck can't do a darn thing about that. So give up already. Just sell it. Just sell everything. I told her that usually after big down days like yesterday, tech rebounds, so it's not a good idea. It's true. If you take the last time we were down, like yesterday, June 11, 2020, when the S&P 500 lost 5.89% and the Dow lost 6.9%, if you bought tech then, you did typically. A week later, Microsoft was up 4.8%, Amazon 4.5%, Apple up 4%. It turned to be a fantastic time to buy. I also took a bit of umbrage, frankly, that I was supposed to be tough on Cisco's Chuck Robbins because he's tough enough on himself. He took the hit on Russia because of the war, but he got hurt by the shutdown in Shanghai that froze up key components. So she said, look, Jimmy, you got, two, you got two choices. I could explain why Cisco disappointed, going over all the myriad issues that made Robbins miss the quarter. Or I could just say, it's not worth it. It's time to sell. Sell aggressively. Because she had also heard the Target was down huge yesterday. And a market that crushes both Cisco and Target is a market that just ain't got anything going for it. And then she said it. She said it. You're too bullish. You're hopelessly optimistic. And there it is. That is the issue. Despite all that's going wrong, all the usual suspects, inflation, Ukraine, China shut down, higher gas, I can still see a way to make things work. I'm not ready to throw in the tail. Don't get me wrong. I can acknowledge everything that's going wrong. I can see the bear thesis as clear as day. Uh, I got bear thesis for a bunch of stocks we own for the charitable trust. You can follow along by joining the CBC Investing Club. I'll even spell them out for you. These are stocks that Mike Trust actually owns. I'm going to give you the bear cases. Let's start with Apple. If you extrapolate Cisco's month of April to Apple, then you're talking about a shortfall of greater magnitude than the $8 billion, which they figured, a much higher end uh, price tag than what they're thinking about, just based on real problems in China. If Shanghai is as shut down as Chuck says, then the 45 points that Apple's lost since its high simply won't be enough to reflect the full horror of the situation. It'd be easy to say sell Apple here because if they came out tomorrow and said it's more than an $8 billion hit, the stock's going to drop more than 20 points. Like that. Bear case against NVIDIA. Company makes the best graphics cards in the world. Absolutely. They're using both gaming and data center. But video games are oh so pandemic and all the COVID winners are being killed. What's the point of owning NVIDIA when you know the stock won't even get credit if the numbers are good anyway? And if the numbers are bad, it's going to get the Cisco treatment, down nearly 14% today. Except unlike Cisco, NVIDIA's got no dividend protection. It'd be easy to tell you to sell NVIDIA. You'd almost have to be crazy not to sell it. Third bear case against Costco. You mean to tell me after Walmart and Target get crushed that Costco somehow won't? That, are they immune just because they got some membership model? The team at Costco would have to be superhuman to navigate the situation. Isn't just another retailer at the end of the day? Reaction to Target, Walmart, and then raw storage after close, they says, you got to stay away from that one. Toxic. For AMD. Oh, the Bears have got it easy on this one. Do you really think that CEO Lisa Sue is so good that she can sidestep the same problems that dragged down Cisco? 
Can this semiconductor company focus on high-performance computing, gaming, and PCs with a smattering of other businesses actually do the numbers? Last time they beat the numbers, the stock went down anyway. Why even bother with AMD? Why? Five, the case against Alphabet. Hey, it didn't even do well last time. Isn't time to just take your lumps and move on? Go home. Last time they got hurt by uh, slowing YouTube numbers in Central Europe. Uh, next time, won't it be uh, all of Europe? Easy to say. You should just get out while they're getting still relatively good. If I had no hope, those are the arguments I'd be making against all five of these stocks. They're all legit, all rational. There are two problems with what I just traced here. One is that these are all what I call core holdings for the Chapel Trust, high-quality companies that we have tremendous faith in despite any short-term concerns. The trust has owned these names for a very long time, and I don't think this challenging moment is that much more worse than other challenging moments that we have dealt with where we stuck with our favorites and it worked out just fine. Second, as a concession to how miserable the market is, one that can send down soft drinks and software at the same time, I actually did trim every core position for the Chapel Trust not that long ago because I do truly dislike this market. I do. Now, I'd be the first to admit that I wish the trust owned less stock here. I mean, who doesn't? But we still bought some yesterday and today because when this market gets this oversold, think the June of 2020, then it makes sense to bet on a bounce and then you can trim. In the end, as much as I can recite the negatives about these five stocks in my sleep, I remain unshakable in my belief that after the smoke clears, they will be higher, not lower. For example, it's almost impossible for me to believe that Apple isn't having a horrible quarter. But the trust has owned Apple through a lot of bad quarters over the years. and It's been a fabulous winter. I lived through the NVIDIA shortfall from the drop-off in Bitcoin mining, particularly Ethereum, the last time the crypto crashed. I've liked Alphabet since $88, and it's disappointed me numerous times over the course of its long march to 2200. AMD's been unbearable for huge swaths of points, including the last 66 points down. Oh, and how about the 185 points that Costco just lost? What does it take to shake me out of that already? The answer in each case, my charitable trust is not renting these stocks. It's owning pieces of these companies. At times, these companies will not do well, but they're amazing businesses with amazing management. I'll give them another chance to have amazing stocks, too, because historically, that's been the right call. Yes, this market is terrible. It is awful. On some days like yesterday, I do want to go home, pour myself a mezcal, and close the door. But that's not how you make money. The bottom line, over the long haul, I think the best way to make money is by believing, not disbelieving, by owning not renting, by taking the pain and engaging, not slamming the door and hiding in the bedroom. That's why I'm here every night, rain or shine. David, Alabama, Dave. Hey, Booyah, Jim from Gulf Shores, Alabama on the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, I love it there. I'm, a, I'm kind of a Golden Grape 98 guy myself. What's up? Hey, Kroger. Kroger. I bought Kroger. I uh, thought it was a nice fit with a uh, agricultural wheat and corn ETF that I had. Thought it was going to be a nice fit, consumer, uh, you know, a consumer staple. You're getting killed. Uh, well, I don't well, know whether uh, to hold know, on. It's a relative thing. The stock is up six percent for the year, and that's why people still uh, there are people who are hiding in Kroger. Is, what, is the way we call it. I think Kroger is doing a remarkable job. I think Rodney McMullen is doing. A remarkable, I always would invite Rodney to come on the show. That's how well he's doing, and I think that Kroger is a stock you want to hang with not run from. Brian in Maryland. Brian. Hey, Jim. How's it going? Not bad. Trying to stick with it. How about you? All right. Pretty good. I'm a big fan of your uh, show in the morning on the block, and I appreciate oh. all of your uh, advice. And, Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's great. Um, so my question today is about Qualcomm. Um, I'm about 152 cost basis. It's trading around 13 times, which if the market's around 17, shooting for maybe 16, it seems to be a little undervalued to me. The buying back stock the last four quarters, see an inventory building on the balance sheet. Uh, what are your thoughts? You think well, that should? I, I think Chris Yaman. No, I think I want you to hold it. Chris Yaman's fantastic. He's a CEO. Uh, it's actually really about 11 times. They are buying back a lot of stock. They do have a lot of business in China, and as we know from uh, Chuck Robbins last night at Cisco, if you're in China, it's possible that you've been shut down. Their handset makers in China are doing quite poorly. But how about we just ride this one out? Qualcomm has, I'd say, 15 down and 50 up, and that is a decent risk-reward where I'm from. This is a tough moment for the market, an awful moment. But remember, over the long term, I think the best way to make money is by believing, not disbelieving. 
and by owning, not renting. All made money tonight. With every day that natural gas prices spend at near their highest levels in over a decade, the case for nuclear energy grows. I'm sitting down with the CEO of Constellation Energy, see if an investment in that stock could have your portfolio seeing stars. Then I'm taking a look at the defense sector and telling you if some names in the group could offer the right protection in an uncertain market. And cybersecurity powerhouse Palo Alto Networks reported its quarterly result at the close. I'm sitting down with the CEO, fresh off the report. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.